everybody. It's Everyday Nerdy, and we'll be doing things a bit differently. I'm going to be commenting over a time lapse of me doing the arm of Zaku. So let's start here. So first you create a line for the arm length, and then after that, you can put a plane on the arm. I did a plane at an angle. You can do this the other way too if you want, the perpendicular way. Then you got to create the sketches, squares, rectangles, however you want to call it. Now this shape is a bit different. It's not a perfect square, so I did lines to do the edge looking part. And you could use a mirroring tool. However, I just use dimensions. A bit more complicated. And then if you give it a couple seconds, you'll see I'll be zooming into my mistake where it's not touching. I could have easily just hit extend instead. For some reason, I thought moving it down would work. Not sure why. And if you see when I highlight it, it's not going to extrude. So, but this piece will extrude because it's fully enclosed, as you can see now. Now, I'm going to go back and fix my mistake. I delete the line, then I'm going to create a new line. I'm going to make sure it touches. And then, of course, i got to re-add the dimensions to it. And, you know, the shortcut for line is like L, and I think dimensions is D when you're in sketch mode. And now when I extrude this polygon, you'll see that I will successfully extrude it. Don't mean to cut, let me change that. And I always do new body because I just, I don't know, I feel like that. Now I got to create um, a cut inside to match that part of the arm. So I just double click the edges and I create an outline by selecting O for a shortcut. And as you can see, the outline's made. Then I'm going to extend the lines and create uh, like an extend extended rectangle of the inner outline I made. Which might take me a couple seconds because I'm a bit, I don't know, slow sometimes when it comes to doing this stuff. So, and then there, it's enclosed. So now, the next thing is to cut the box that I just made. And voila, it is cut now. So, now it's going to be my favorite tool. Chamfer. I like it. It looks nice. And the most tedious thing is selecting all the lines. Because it's just really annoying. If there's a way just to select all lines, that'd be a lot easier. And you'll see, it takes a couple seconds to, not even a couple seconds, maybe a minute. It probably took longer. Because this is quick in the speed. So, yeah. I think I have them all selected. No, a couple more missing. So, now, I should be, I should have all of them. I'm double checking. Yep. And I chamfer them. It's pretty cool. I like it. Between chamfer and fillet, it's pretty good. But I think fillet, you can just select a face and it does it all. So now here I'm nitpicking and I'm making sure that the, I guess the part that's closer to the elbow is aligned with like the shoulder part. And as you can see right here, it is not. So I'm gonna push it in a bit so it looks nice. You don't have to do this. I'm just, on, it's gonna bother me so I have to fix it. And then we have the top part of the arm. On to the next piece, the forearm. This is gonna be it's going to be a real challenge. So first I create a sketch outlining of the circle. And then I'm going to create sketches outlining the rest of the piece individually. You're going to have what I would call the inner forearm piece and then the outer forearm piece. Uh, I don't really know a good differentiation between them. So you could do lofting to create it. Um, I tried it and it did look nice, but it was, I don't know, I feel I wanted to do things with just simple extruding and creating sketches. So, and now you can see it is done. The, well, the sketching part. Now I just need to extrude, which I will be doing. So I'm gonna extrude the circle. And when I extrude the circle, you extrude it from both sides because I gotta push it up. And then now I gotta extrude the other pieces. However, I'm noticing I'm noticing that the things aren't aligned by things, I mean the sketches, but we'll work on that probably soon after I finish extruding all these pieces, as you can see. So this piece I'm extruding right now, I considered the outer piece, if I could clarify. And the previous piece that is in the circle, I considered the outer piece. Yeah, I, I, I know, it's not too helpful. Um, hopefully in the edit I put like the location somewhere up every time I did it. So. I'm going to increase the circle size a bit, and then now things are going to get wild when I start to move things because I didn't move it as a unit. I moved it individually, and as you can see, the line above is adjusting. I'm trying to fix it. It's better, in hindsight, if I moved everything as one unit instead of as individual pieces because these lines, um, 
they're connected to one another and I probably didn't apply constraints correctly, which is something I'm still learning to use the constraints correctly when sketching. But you see how on the left hand side, the panel, well, now it's outlined as dark blue, but when it's not is because it's not fully connected. And that's how you can tell when a pan when uh, not panel a sketch like a polygon sketch needs to be enclosed like you have to extend a line is to make sure that it's like the dark blue shade which now you can see the outer piece is not because I'm adding the lines and now you see there's a gap still there so I have to extend it which is a great tool and now the extruding pieces match perfectly voila even though they match. It still needs to be adjusted because if you remember when I rotate it, it needs to be pushed down a bit. And here I'm moving all the pieces and I missed out on one piece so I have to go back and fix it. And I'm probably need to extend it, extend the line a bit so to make sure it's touching it. So now see that looks a lot better. It's more aligned with the image in the back. But you can see that this left outer piece is not enclosed. When you fast forward through the timeline back and forth, sometimes the, there's like, I think at like cache in memory where it still shows the extruding piece, even though it has issues. Usually you can see it when there's a yellow, like a yellow thing on the bottom. It shows like warning, something like that. But now the piece on the bottom right is not yellow and this is extruded well. So now I'm just gonna angle, give it a slight angle. You could use a drafting tool. I just pulled it. Now I got to draft the circle. I like drafting. Drafting is fun too. So draft that. So it looks, has a bit of an angle look. Mm, not too bad. Well, let's see. Now I think it needs to be a bit evened out this one face like that. That looks good. Okay. Now second best, second best thing next to chamfer is fillet. So in retrospect, I probably could have just clicked the face and had all the fillets done quickly, but I don't know if it would have looked too good. So let's just do the lines one by one. Okay. I think I have most of the lines. Yeah. See, and then it has like that nice round corner look. See, that looks nice. But I need to, so I extrude a little bit so it can be a bit higher. You can always go back in the timeline and do things like that. And hmm, it looks pretty good. Now, I need to, um, what's it called? I need to cut. So to cut, I'm just to make sure it lines up with the rectangle that's above from the previous cut of like, the, what do you call this piece? The bicep part. I just extend the lines. Once I extend the lines, now I enclose the polygon and I cut through it. As you can see right now, I need to cut a bit forward also so I can cut the whole entire piece. Now that that's done, I need to take the faces that I've cut and just you can draft it or I prefer sometimes to do the pull method where you just angle things slightly. You click the face and you just slowly put it at a nice cute angle. I need to wrap things up because you can see the battery was low <laughs> or I need to find the charger. So yeah, that gives it a nice cute round look. See? So here I'm just going to click the body, you know, and do symmetry, so, you know, so you can see the full version of it. And then now I was kind of doing the hinges and all that stuff, what's called the elbow and the part that will connect the shoulder to the chest. And I may have the video guy. I don't know what happened. All I learned is I'm not going to use QuickTime again to record the screen. I'm going to stick to OBS. It was being real weird. So in the meantime, I'm going to show you like, you know, a little teaser. You can see some legs and you see the finished product of the elbow, the part that connects the shoulder to the chest, you know, and the hinges. So. Stay tuned for the next video. Bye.